Hello everybody, my name is Hellkaiser and welcome back to Resident Evil 2 as it says itself. Uh, this is the first time we're actually loading the game in properly from, you know, to the typewriter screen. Feels good to actually do it right. He once again stepped into the, sur the world of survival horror. Good luck. Honestly wish they kept that. I did some testing the other day. I want to make it clear. I would show you, but I just, I worried they'd somehow mess up the recording. The, I tested the game without the down sampling on, and it still did not fix, like, this wobbly, you know, lid and stuff like that on the, uh, on the storage chest and stuff like that. Apparently that's an upscaling issue. If I lower the game back down to native resolution or... Uh, software render then it renders correctly so unfortunately like the, the 3d things are not messed up by the smoothing uh, and I looked at the game without the smoothing on and I must say it looks significantly worse and like there's not a lot of things that are you know fixed by doing it so there's no real reason to do it uh, so just giving you a little bit of uh, a status update as to to why things are the way they are. It's got nothing to do with some of my settings other than just the fact that the game was never meant to be this upscaled. Leon was never supposed to look this well modeled. Like I've even seen screenshots of the PC version uh, that don't look like this, you know? There's just, this was how this game was never, you know, this is the definitive way this game looks, but it's also, it's still on an emulator and an emulator can't, just magically fix everything. Okay, now Ada went this way, but I think, like, that fan is on or something? Yeah. Okay, that's all those dead guards we saw yesterday. Just double-checking everything. I really am looking forward to playing through some more survival horror games. Since Tango Gameworks is coming out with uh, Ghostwire Tokyo soon, I'm not going to play that game on recording because I don't even know if I'm going to get that, uh, you know, day of release. But I am going to, to play like The Evil Within One and Two for you guys at some point because I really legitimately liked uh, Evil Within series. I liked the second one slightly better than I did the first. The first one feels like it's trying so hard to be up there with Resident Evil and stuff like that, even down to the fact the names are different in Japan. For anybody who doesn't know, Resident Evil is known as Biohazard in Japan. Uh, and all the games are like Biohazard 2, 5, 6, 7, you know, all that. Well, The Evil Within is known by a much cooler title in Japan, and it's called Psycho Break. And it sounds a lot cooler than The Evil Within. I honestly think they should have used that title here in America, too. But I felt like, you know, the fact you go from a hospital to a, like, scary village to a mansion and all that stuff, I felt like they were really trying just a bit... Oh, you gotta be bloody joking me. I forgot that stupid wheel I needed. I should have put it in my inventory. I did put... Yes, I, I did put it there. Aha. I'm not an idiot. Uh, anyway, I felt like the second one... I've never seen a game attempt to do an open-world survival horror. Uh, you know, I, I think that's a good idea, and maybe you can argue Metro Exodus. Okay, that's not where it should be either. Uh... But in my personal experience, I've never seen it done, it, let's just say right, you know, and, and Metro is a little bit more action orientated to than it is survival horror. I think the first game was the only one that you can really ever argue uh, was survival horror. I should have put my ink ribbons up, man. I got too much stuff now. I'm carrying way too much. Go ahead and... Oh, sorry about that. Drop a save state.
If we have to go somewhere and dump some gear, I guess we will. Okay. It's a high pressure gas cylinder. In case of emergency, the red light will turn on and the gas cylinder may be removed. Dang! Holy shit. Just book it, man. Book it. Okay, we're gonna pull a Jaws on this thing. Okay, in case of emergency. How do I... Yes. Now it's not time for that. How do I... Can I kick it into its mouth? Say hello to my little, uh... Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> okay, that is legitimately badass. 1998 had that cool of a moment, you know, like, you, people nowadays think modern games are very cinematic and so like that. That was cinematic, and it's a cool reference to one of my favorite movies. I love Jaws, it's a great movie. I'm a big reader too, and generally I try to read the books that a lot of the movies and stuff I watch are based on. And Jaws is legitimately one of those cases where uh, you can say 100% the movie is better. I don't know if any of you have ever read the book, and I don't want to necessarily spoil it for people, but I will put it this way. If you could turn Jaws into an, a soap opera, essentially, stretch it out, make it slightly longer and unnecessary as can be, you have Jaws, the book. This bullet wound isn't making things any easier. It went straight through. I'll patch you up. That's two I owe you. Don't mention it. I just found out John's dead. What? Never mind. Let's just get out of here. The sooner the better. I am into bandage. Okay, is there anything like over here? No. Oh, crap, I was gonna say Ada better not have stuck me into that corner. Oh no. Okay, yeah, so I should have, when I was there, used that valve. You've got to be bloody joking me. I would have rather, once I crossed, it would have automatically gone back up. I thought I should have done that, but I didn't want it to say, this key is no longer useful, discard, and then do that. It'd been cool if the corpse of that giant alligator thing was still there. By the way, speaking of Resident Evil, I don't generally like share, uh, I guess what I call mod news or anything like that. Uh, I occasionally will talk about like fan translations, but I feel like this is worth mentioning. Uh, some people may have heard of what some people call Resident Evil 1.5 or the original version of Resident Evil 2. Uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, this is not the version of Resident Evil, you know, that was originally out there. There was another version uh, that came out, you know, or was in development before this was the final build of the game. And 
Claire's character wasn't going to be named Claire. She's going to be called Eliza Walker. Uh, and I believe she was a cop. I think, like, both Leon and her were supposed to be cops. Leon was in that version, but Claire just was not. Uh, and some of you might have seen, like, some footage of that build. Uh, Eliza's wearing, like, a motorcycle rally cross kind of jumpsuit deal. Uh, well, that mod, there's a, there's a developer or a modder or something like that. I don't really know the whole story that has been working on that version of the game. Somehow they found or bought the demo off of somebody who owned a disc version of that copy. And it was only like 40% complete. Uh, like the doors didn't have the door opening animations. It just fades to black kind of stuff. Okay, then do it. Am I supposed to... There we go, now we can jump back. Anyways, I was saying, let me just pause so I can get this out because I can't think and do much. Uh, anyway, there's a version of that that's been out and you can find it on like different uh, ROM sites and fan sites and things like that uh, called Resident Evil 1.5 Magic Door or something like that. And it is, a, it's being updated. I It actually has an ending now. It doesn't have like an ending boss fight as far as I've been told. I played it a little bit. And it's interesting. Uh, it uses the Jap. It's based off of the Japanese build. It's just been English translated and uh, edited. So like Eliza doesn't have a voice actress, and the controls like you know how here we press uh, and say in the menu we press cross or X or A whatever you wish to call that button to do stuff. They press circle. To do it and we press you know it, it's backwards if you've ever played a japanese game which i have before and it's a little confusing there and the menu doesn't look anything like it does here it's actually a bit more complex and you actually use the shoulder buttons to uh are you serious i need that medallion and you could actually like use the shoulder buttons to toggle between the map and the files and all that. It was legitimately looked more advanced than this one did. Sewer Management Diary. It's been a while, but I saw Don today and we were talk after completing our work. He told me he had been sick and in bed until yesterday. He really doesn't come as much of a surprise considering how long he's been working here. He was sweating like a horse and kept scratching his body while we were talking. I asked if he was hot, but he just looked at me funny. What's wrong with him anyway? Uh, July 7th, Chief Irons has been visiting the lab quite often lately. I don't know what he's been doing over there, but he's always looking grim. The expression on his face has been even more unsettling than usual. My guess is that's because of Dr. Birkin's impossible request. The Chief has my sympathies, though. After all he's done for this town, he doesn't deserve this. July 21st. That's a few days before my birthday. I rarely drink because I'm on the graveyard shift, but I don't suppose I have much to complain about since this is how I make my living. August 16th. Chief Irons came in late today, looking grimmer than his usual self. I tried to joke with him to cheer him up, but he wasn't amused. He pulled his gun and threatened to shoot me. I was able to calm him down, but that guy must have heard some serious problems. He knows he can't enter the lab without my help and my medal. That's what it means for the chief. This is... Sorry. I have one of those ring cameras and there's kids playing outside. Uh, this is what it means for the chief to serve and protect. August 21st. William informed me the police and media have begun their investigation on Umbrella's affairs. He said that they will... The investigation will be citywide and that there is a possibility they'll even search through the sewers. He asked me to suspend all Umbrella sewer facility operations until the investigation is concluded. The sewer will still be used for passage, but it. But he stressed that I could, that I have to be extremely cautious and that I'd lose my job if anyone finds out about this operation. Okay, sounds like things were really serious. 
Anyways, I was saying about the re or the unreleased build of this game. Uh, I haven't played too far into it. I already said that. I've just played a little bit of Eliza's story, but it's it's actually different. Like it doesn't start off the same as this game. You start off in uh, like a mall or some sort of building, or she crashed her bike and stuff like that. Yeah, you know it it really is uh, very cool and very interesting. I hope that it gets finished. It'd be interesting if they even found somebody to voice act it or something. I I don't know if they will. I'd be surprised. But either way, it you know, I recommend checking it out if you can. Uh, I'm very much into unreleased games and stuff like that. Like, I, I played Thrill Kill and stuff like that, which I know a lot of people have played Thrill Kill since, you know, it originally came out. Or never did come out. You know what I mean. But it's one of those things I, I really love to see okay that's a zombie that was not there earlier i like game preservation i like to look at these like unreleased builds and i think it's it's truly incredible when game de fans not even game developers but just like fans and stuff will try to see through a vision that another person once had you know now, maybe there was a reason that they didn't keep Eliza's storyline and change certain things, but whatever that reason was, you know, it's still a, a really, really good game, you know, just from what's looking at it, you know, maybe they should have done something. Like, when I heard that they were going to do a Resident Evil 2 remake, I legitimately thought maybe we would get Eliza as some sort of DLC, like the third survivor, or maybe even retcon the story and have it be about three survivors now would i have been you know jumping up and down and singing glory glory hallelujah if they had done that probably not i mean it, it just wasn't something that was that big a deal to me either way however i do think that it was a uh, a missed opportunity I, I since they're doing the ps5 i, I don't know what you call it remaster it's not even remaster just re-release uh, I've been looking back at some of the stuff I played when I played Resi 2 Remake and stuff like that, and I have noticed just how different this version is than the than the remake. Like I said, you know how we just went into the sewers through a door? Uh, and you know, we had to go through this building and into the parking garage and stuff like that. In the remake, we done had a boss fight with Birkin. And stuff like that. We had to get like three medallions and go underneath the statue and all that. There was a lot of there's a lot of requirements for that remake. And I feel like it's it's strange that they decided they wanted to make it more complicated in some ways because here I think everything moves along at a very nice pace. Uh, yeah, that that zombie's still alive. Just ignore him. At least she can shoot and stuff like that, but it's not necessary to kill those things. If you don't get any benefit from it, there's no point in doing it, is my personal saying. Never put in more effort than what is actually required. Okay, where is that? I know I saw that door. Because I was at it in the last episode. I just don't know. Man, she's dropping. I hope that she don't die or nothing and cause some sort of game over. Where was that frickin' thing I saw?
Perfect. I like how they f rise up when they're dead and float in the water. You care to shoot him again, honey? I don't have ammo for this, but if you want to waste it. That's actually not a bad idea. Just let the AI take care of the zombies for you. He's not dead yet. Now don't tell me I'm going to have to track all the way back through there and slow that fan again and all that. Because I can't figure out where the heck to go. I might have to go back and look at my footage or something because I can't find the place on the map. You see, there's not nothing here, as far as I can tell. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing over there. Okay, this is actually starting to confuse me now, because I, I have lost track of where I was. Also, it's incredible that Leon can still function. I know the bullet went straight through and it looked like it hit him just below the shoulder. I don't, you know, underneath the collarbone, I can't tell you the exact positioning of the bullet. But, realistically speaking, he'd be in a lot of pain without painkillers. You know, getting shot is not a not a fun experience. And with the, the blood loss he's suffered, you know, it looked like quite a bit ultimately and the fact he soaks through that bandage already uh, that means he's bleeding quite profusely you know he would not be in good shape what well, just losing a third of your blood or 30 percent you know is very bad you're putting yourself at a lot of, of risk there you know once you start to lose more than that you're not going to be able to function and he's running and stuff like that and is your heart beats faster it pumps more and so you're losing blood even quicker okay where the heck it wouldn't be like all the way back up here would it yeah she won't follow me here But I might as well do some checking on my own. No, it wasn't here. I'm legitimately lost. Maybe there was something in that room that we were actually just in where I had to use the fan, you know, to climb back out, that I somehow missed. I don't think I missed anything, but I guess I did. Okay, is there anything? No, there's nothing there. It looked like there's a, a place to turn or something. Talking about these older games, I wonder what I should play next for you guys uh, out of this library. I might do Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, but I don't necessarily want to play two tank control Resident Evils back to back. Uh, 
I might though, because I always wanted to do Resident Evil 3 Classic, because I personally felt that it was the superior game, and I've seen a lot of people online say it's the superior game. You know, to me, it was too short for a $60 release, and you could argue that the original was that short, and, you know, I might... Okay, is that the box right there? Yes, it is. Okay, so I was running all around for something that was literally right there. I feel like an idiot. Anyway, uh, you know, I think I, I voiced that enough in the, my video series for Resident Evil 3, and, uh, you know, I voiced it quite a bit in other things since then, but to me, it just, it wasn't how you, I understand cutting stuff or redoing stuff, like I said, the Resident Evil 2 remake was a bloody good game, uh-oh, even though it did some things that changed the formula. It didn't detract from the fact that it was a, a very solid game. The only thing that I saw wrong with it was it sometimes seemed a bit too different and it seemed like it was trying too hard to be difficult, you know, because the tank controls were gone. Uh, and it wasn't even that it was difficult, it's just I don't like being followed by Mr. X. I know on PC you can like mod him out, but he's now part of the story and it feels weird to like m mod him out when he's supposed to be there. This is the control panel for the sky. Okay, okay. Anything I need, like over here. He won't interact with nothing. Check every corner, because if it's just one shotgun shell I need, then I, I'm going to bring it. And I'm inside the car. Oh, crap. Oof. See, like, we did this so much earlier in the remake. I do not have the ammo for this. I like how he's just turning his head, and that's it, like, no, what the F was that, or holy S, or just any normal human reaction, just looking. Well, I mean, in some ways, I guess that would be a normal human reaction. You know, I, I, I think after hollering, like, maybe the first time, I would just be the guy just sitting there staring, but, you know, Leon's been kind of vocal so far, it just seems odd for him to suddenly become quiet, you know what I mean? It, I guess you could say it wasn't strange, it was out of character. A flare gun. I need something to ignite it. Okay, thank you. White box key. Almost completely out of ammo. Oh crap. I'll take this one. You take some of those. Start shooting, Ada. Where'd that other one go? Oh crap, back away. 
Yeah, earn your keep here, Ava. There we go. We got six bullets left in this, which, because my gun fires in three round bursts, means I can fire enough shots to possibly down one zombie. I really like the music now, too. It's gotten very moody, I guess is what you'd say. Kind of more atmospheric. Shotgun parts. Thank you, Jesus. Good thing I decided to come back down that hallway. Okay, let's take a look at you. No, don't combine. Just check. Remington M11 full-size semi-automatic shotgun. The longer barrel results in more concentrated blast. So I just, instead of making it kind of like a, I guess a pistol grip. Was it? Yeah, it was a pistol grip shotgun, wasn't it? I put a, uh, a grip bear stock on the back. I wish there was a little bit more of the gun customization aspect in the next Resident Evil game. Because I really love how you find parts and stuff like that. There you go. Good girl, Ada. Do me a solid and shoot this one. Stop walking into me and shoot. If you could do it again, I'd be most appreciative. I'm running extremely low on ammo. I'll deal with the bigger things. I dealt with the crocodile for you. you oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, that's a ladder. Ada. Ada. Shoot. Shoot. I'm dry. Thank you for finally shooting. Yeah, I like how, yeah, the rifle does look, it, he's still not holding it like anybody. I, I have used a shotgun. I've been turkey hunting and I've used shotguns. Let me share a secret with you. If you don't put the, the stock on your shoulder, even if you just put it like on your forearm or, or your, uh, not your forearm, your bicep, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, I got massive bruises just from doing that. You know, the kick is, you know, on some of those really, really strong, especially I was eight when I was shooting a shotgun. Uh, you know, it was adult-sized shotgun, I think, or I might be wrong on that, but either way, it, it kicked like a freaking meal. Uh, trying to aim a shotgun like that, you can do it, but he would, his whole body would jump back and his arms would go straight up and he might potentially stagger back and fall with his already blood loss he might be unstable he might have his balance off that's a very stupid thing to do and it's not even like it's that shoulder that is injured it would have made more sense if he was having to do it because of his injured shoulder unfortunately you know i have to say i don't like the way they decided to do that because of that okay i'm being flush with medical items now is there a crate or something? I'll take the shot. I have no more room. Yes, there is a, a crate. Thank goodness. I'm going to store these two herbs. I'm going to leave two because I have a feeling I might need to, especially since I'm completely out of pistol ammo. It might not be a bad idea to take the magnum and leave my pistol. No, not you. There. Yeah, I think that's the play. There 
go. If you're also wondering why I'm save stating instead of using my ribbons, you gain uh, items for the least amount of saves. I think just using the two I have has knocked me out of an item or two. So that's why I'm save stating instead of, uh, you know, just saving every time, even though technically I have the ribbons for it. Now they give me handgun ammo. Matilda. Do I still carry Matilda then, or should? Is it, that's a lot of items, so I guess I shouldn't carry Matilda. If I have to come back for her, I will. But I want to be smart as I can, because 15 bullets, realistically, in three-round burst with that pistol won't last me long as one good bullet from the Lightning Hawk would. Okay, that's a map right there. I need that map. Anything else I can scrounge for around here? No. Oh. I like the sound of the wind and all that. Okay, that's I guess where I turn on the thing with the key. Okay, there's something glistening back there. Magnum bullets. Yeah, see, good thing I took it. That's an extra clip for my mag. That's another panel control key. Okay, I think we got everything we need there. So realistically, between my magnum and my shotgun, any big things that come after me, I should be able to take care of it. You push the activation switch. Should I have done that, or did I miss anything by doing that? I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh-oh. Ada! 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 Can you hear me? Come on, snap out of it! Security panel, in case of emergency, the red light will turn on and access from outside will be prohibited for a limited time. So now I'm locked out here with whatever that thing is. Hello, William. That is just disturbing. But in the most awesome of ways. Okay, I want to quick save here because I don't want to have to to reload through the cutscenes and stuff a thousand times. Ow.
that is why you need a magnum. He ain't carrying anything of any use. Oh, I forgot that I can actually carry two more shells in my shotgun now, too. That's nice. So I did that with only one medical spray and a full round of magnums. A little over a full clip of magnums. That's not too bad. All right. Sorry for like that weird cut. I ha I happened to get a phone call at that exact moment, so I apologize. And I I had to actually redo the boss fight. I had to pause and do everything. I'm sorry. Don't die on me, Ada. Come on. Wake up. Come on. Okay, I was saying this just a moment ago, but I don't mean to question the game developers here. I've never been shot and tried to carry anybody, but with that injury, like I said, he'd be he's bleeding quite a bit. Even if he could lift her, he'd be in extreme pain, and maybe if his adrenaline was pumping, he could do it, but I just don't see him being able to be that strong. Welcome back. Uh. Hey, take it easy. We're inside Umbrella's secret lab. I'll go find something to treat that wound, so just rest here in the meantime. But I'll only slow you down with these injuries. Go, save yourself. I told you, it's my job to look after you. But you'll be in danger if you stay with me. I know I've only known you for a short period of time. But I really enjoy being with you. I... I know I'm not capable of caring about anyone, but I don't want to lose you. We're leaving this place together. Wait here for me. I'll be right back. We're leaving together. Take Ada to the office to rest. Honestly, I honestly really like that line from her. I don't remember what she said in the remake. I, I think she's a little bit more edgy because, unfortunately, I don't mean to sound like I'm beating a dead bush or just repeating myself endlessly here, but I feel like the modern video games have become kind of, how do I say this in a nice way, a bit overly liberal. And I'm an independent. That's how I see myself. Uh, to me, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, of correct, you know, there's a middle ground and both sides have some correct things and have a lot of wrong things. Uh, so, you know, take that as you will. I don't mean offense to anybody, you know. But anyway, uh, to me, like when you play... Resident Evil 3, you know, I, that's a game I've mentioned quite a bit, you know, just on this episode. In the original game, Jill's line when she kills the nemesis is, you want stars, I'll give you stars, and then she shoots him. In the remake, she says, next time, take a fucking hint, you know? It's just, I don't, I, I've said before, I don't like women who cuss, and it just seemed like they're trying to make her more of a badass than they were anything else. I don't like it. I'd rather just had the original line. It was iconic for a reason. Uh, and, you know, then you look at stuff, like just different games here and there. Aloy from Horizon. Uh, I haven't played the second one yet. I have it. I just haven't played it yet. Uh, mostly because I just never finished the first one. I actually had to go back uh, and try to finish it up on PS5 before the new one came out, and I just still haven't finished that yet. Uh, I find her character to be so annoying. I might have mentioned it before, but there's a quest. I can't remember the guy, but he has a sister who's like the, the general slash lover of the Sun King, and he help the brother helps her locate... Oh, you gotta be... These are those, like, regenerators, aren't they? Or not to... Crap! Crap! Man, there's a lot of them.
Hate is gone. Okay, let's try to get back through there without any further problem. I honestly don't know which way to go, and I'm trying my best to figure that out on the fly. Okay, so that's actually the way I was supposed to go. Right. Dang. So those things can hurt me a lot quicker. Danger if you stay with me. What the heck? Oh, it just... Sorry, it messed up there. You can actually unload your save state, which is, in my opinion, a wonderful idea in case something was to to go wrong. You know, say you, ought, you for some reason wanted to uh, fix something or you didn't mean to load state, you're trying to save state or something. I like that you can actually undo the load. A huge breaker system that regulates all the power in the lab. The main fuse has been removed and the power is not active in some areas. Well, there's blue light there. I'm going to assume that this means this door is inoperable. No, it does not. West area. The shutter is shield is sealed firmly in place. Sorry, I have trouble pronouncing like S S's back to back. Locked from the inside. I don't know where to go, it's kind of confusing. Laboratory security manual. Security measures in case of an emergency. In the instance of an uncontrollable biohazardous outbreak, all security measures will be directed towards the underground transport facility. In the instance that any abnormalities are detected among cargo and transit, all materials will be automatically transported from the loading zone to the designated high-speed train at which point all materials will be isolated and disposed of immediately. In the instance of a Class 1 emergency, the entire train will be purged and disposed of without delay. In the instance that the lab itself has become contaminated, the northernmost route currently used to transport the materials to and from the facility will be designated as the emergency escape route. The route will secure passage to the relay point outside the city limits. Uh, Disclosure about any information regarding research conducted here or because of the or the existence of this, this facility is strictly prohibited. Since it's top priority to keep all research classified and escape access may be denied under certain extenuating circumstances. You need space to obtain what the heck is that thing? It's a flamethrower. Oh, baby. What the heck is that? Researcher's corpse. Looks like he poured oil all over this place. Okay. Just, just in case, I don't want to burn through ammo unnecessarily here. But I'm going to enjoy this. Immensely. Are you serious? And that used up 4% ammo, just in that little spray. Are you bloody joking me? Sorry. Load uh, another save state. Equip that bloody flamethrower. What the heck? What's the point of this? Are you serious? That's... Why give me the flamethrower then? I cannot describe how pissed off I am by that. So you give me a cool flamethrower as a toy, but then you say, no, don't use the flamethrower, use your lighter.
Okay, is there anything else then around here? The console says anti BOW gas sprinkler. Will you turn on the switch? I guess I crawl through the hole. I like how that's actually... Oh no, it hasn't stopped the liquor. Holy crap. That did, though. Combine. I can't carry any more items. Do you take the shotgun shells? Yes, I will. Yes, I will take the shotgun shells, because that's my primary weapon now. The interior has been destroyed by the plant. You know, while I, I've always praised Resident Evil for, like, its creativity between bugs and, like, weird organic tissue monsters and stuff like that, uh, even down to frickin' mold monsters, uh, I still say to a, a slight degree, uh, you know, I've always found some of these Resident Evil games, you know, like I said, 6 and 5 were so bad. It's amazing when you look at the track record. One... Or the yeah, even one because it was so influential, and then the remake of one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then, uh, and then seven, and eight, and what else was there? Uh, the remake of two, and then maybe some of the light gun games or, or Veronica X. You look at all those games that were like really good in the series. And you, and you think about, you know, wow, that's a massive list of really bloody good games in this series. And then you look at uh, the bad, and then you think to yourself, holy shit, you know, how did it go from such a well-respected game series with some, you know, when you actually look at it, even, I didn't count Revelations 1 and 2 because I personally don't, I played Revelations and I liked it. Uh, I liked it quite a bit. But, you know, it's not what I consider, you know, to be the cream of the crop of excellence or anything like that. It's just a mildly... Okay, there's a lot of things here. I need to find some sort of storage thing. Girl box for super low temperature experience. I could set the superconductor fuse here if I had a fuse case. So... I think I need to just come back here. Anyways, I was saying, when you look at some of the... Like, Revelations 2, at the time, you know, it came out before 6 did, or 7 did, I'm sorry. And, for its time, a lot of people, myself included, were really happy that it looked like it was finally back to survival horror and a little less focused on the action. Even though Barry's campaign was a lot more action-orientated. Uh... You know, just how did a phenomenal game series be become solely remembered by its worst entries is my point. You know, I, I really wonder, it boggles the mind, how that came to be, you know. Is it, when you look at Resident Evil as a whole, you know, there's a, there's a really, really solid game series there like i said and i didn't list every entry like resident evil uh i can't remember what it was called but it was the one where it's like a left for dead style co-op shooter uh you know it's like it takes place between resident evil 2 and 3 and stuff like that and it's before it i don't know what it's called but i played that game when it first came out uh So I guess I need to go back and dump some gear and then pick up that fuse and stuff. Actually, I'll just have to do that in the next episode. We're at the end of our time. So anyways, I was saying, 
uh, when you look at how like 5 wasn't even a bad game it was just it, it's like Resident Evil Revelations neither one are bad they're just not as good I guess it's the only thing you have to say about such a game It is gone. Okay. I don't think we're going to need that small key now. I think that we just missed our opportunity for that. I have no idea what the white box key goes to. And I might need that. I don't think I'll be needing this wheel. I'm going to save the flamethrower because I might have to deal with like an army of those guys. But because I found that medical spray, should I go ahead and dump this? Possibly. Well, for now, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, like I said, I don't know if we're going to go straight into three. I have actually enjoyed this so much that I might go ahead and do a Claire playthrough, but I, I don't think you guys would enjoy that, because ultimately, while some of the story bits are different, like, it, it's not the exact same game uh, line for line. There's, like, a, an alternate boss here, and there's a little bit of variety. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it's practically the same game. Uh, the only thing you get is a mildly different story and a little bit of, you know, different things like Ada is not really prevalent in Clara's story and stuff like that but I don't really recall you know you going through like the order of events that different now it's been a while since I played Clara's story I mostly every time like I said I've replayed this game I've mostly replayed Leon's story uh just Leon A uh so I might do like a Claire playthrough or Claire B playthrough uh, but I don't know what I'll do. I might just jump into Resident Evil 3. I, I have a feeling that'll be what I do. And then we'll go from there. Uh, but honestly, uh, I'm really enjoying this series. I, like I said, I still say as much as the remake was, was a very high quality product and a lot better than I originally thought it would be, that this still holds up as the better game. Even with the tank controls and the limited inventory space and all that, I feel like some of the added rooms and the change remix level design of the remake was not as good as the original. You know, I, I just playing it, that's how I feel. I'll talk more about that in depth once we finish this game. But for now, that's that's my opinion, and my opinion stands. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed, and hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening.